I want to take some time to showcase some powerful features on Aurora that might get lost if you don't take the time to learn them. And trust me, you're going to want to know these features. First, we're going to talk about Aurora's shift functions, which utilize the reverse and freeze buttons, as well as a couple of knobs. To access the shift functions, hold shift on Aurora. You'll notice the LEDs change color, indicating that we're in the shift function menu. You stay in this menu as long as you're holding down shift, and then to exit, simply release shift. We've touched on FFT and how it plays a role in Aurora's sound in the first video, but now we're gonna dive into the different FFT options you have available on Aurora all through the shift menu. To change your FFT setting, hold down shift and press reverse to cycle through the four available settings. The first setting, which is the default, is blue and is a resolution of 4096 samples. This setting is perfect for creating lush, time-stretched reverbs, shimmers, and more. Each subsequent FFT setting cuts that resolution in half with the next setting at 2046, 1028, and finally 512. You'll notice that Aurora's sound quality starts to change as we get lower with certain aspects of it getting de-emphasized while others get emphasized. Let's take a listen to the spectral blurring on the lowest setting and then compare it with the highest. Having access to multiple spectral resolutions really opens up Aurora as a sound design tool and we recommend trying all sorts of sound sources at each setting to hear the differences. Shift and Reverse also contains a second function where you hold the two buttons for two seconds. It's a factory reset. This reset restores all the UI editable features into their default settings, including FFT size, reverse state, and input level, like this. So you'll notice that Aurora performs a brief LED loading animation just to indicate a successful reset. This can be useful for when you find yourself in a spot where you aren't sure how to get out of and you just want a quick button fix just to get back to something familiar. Holding shift and pressing freeze will reload the configurable settings on the text file, which live on the USB drive. This is less of a performative function, but rather a utilitarian function letting you reload your settings after a factory reset. So outside of this, the USB will automatically update settings every time it detects a change, which we'll discuss in detail later in the video. Aurora has the ability to adjust its input audio level by holding shift and turning the mix knob. The total range is minus three dB on the far left end of the knob and plus six dB on the far right. This lets us run line level gear straight into Aurora, making it a perfect reverb companion for any synth outside of the modular realm. The line level adjustment uses the top portion of the LEDs to indicate its state. So if you're looking to reset your level to default, watch the LEDs turn blue here, which indicates zero dB zone. Holding down shift and turning the reflect knob will adjust the stereo enhancement on Aurora. Remember, Aurora has true stereo I.O. and with stereo enhancement, we can push those characteristics to really widen our spectral reverb. When reflect is fully left in the shift menu, you're experiencing normal stereo imagery in your signal path. And as we turn up reflect, you'll hear Aurora enhance the stereo field and increasingly push your spectral signal outward from the center. At the maximum position, Aurora's stereo imagery is doubled, resulting in an ultra-wide sound that fills your ears. Aurora provides visual feedback from your stereo state with the right side of the LED UI filling up the bars from top to bottom. The default stereo enhancement state, which is 75%, is defined by a blue LED zone, similar to Aurora's default input level. And that covers the current shift functions for Aurora. It's important to note that we may add shift functions beyond what is shared here in future firmware updates. 
So make sure to stay up to date with Aurora on our Qubit forum, where other Qubit users, modular enthusiasts, and Qubit team members talk about all things Aurora, Qubit, and modular. Now that we've covered all the tactile controls and their functions on Aurora, we hope that this module has been demystified a bit for you and is opening up a plethora of ideas for your sound. But now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Aurora carries a USB port and drive on its front panel and, quite frankly, is a huge milestone in configurability for Aurora. Using its USB, let's perform under the hood configurability without having to pull our module out of the rack. We can easily perform firmware updates through the USB as well. Simply place the update on the USB and power cycle your module, and it will automatically update for you. For now, however, you can access a list of configurable settings to tailor your Aurora sound for you. So let's dive into it and see what you can change. For access of the configurable options, you'll need a computer with a USB-A port. Take the Aurora USB drive and insert it into your computer. So in the file window, you'll see a few files available, including the firmware file, a couple of log files, the manual, and a quick start guide PDF. With these files is our options.txt file, which is the one we want here. So open the file in your favorite text editor and you'll see a list of settings for Aurora. The layout here is actually really simple. On the left, you see the name of the setting and on the right, a number. The number indicates the setting state with one meaning on and zero meaning off. What you see here is the default settings for Aurora. So feel free to reference either in this spot in the tutorial or the manual for the default settings. You could also copy this file to your desktop and always have it for reference. That would be an easy way to swap out and reset settings. Let's go down the list and cover all the current options. DSP order changes the processing order within Aurora. When the setting is on, all the delay lines are processed first and then sent into the phase vocoder. When it's off, the phase vocoder is sent into the delay lines. This setting is another great way to open up more paths within Aurora's sound design set, and we definitely recommend checking it out. Freeze wet will change the mix behavior when freeze is activated. The default state is off, but when it's on, activating freeze while the mix is fully dry will force the mix setting into full wet, perfect for punching in frozen spectral effects at a moment's notice. This behavior is also found on Databender, whose freeze-mix relation is the same. Latency Comp adds an internal delay on the FFT size samples to keep the FFT and dry signal in sync. The default state is off, which is ideal for keeping your input signal in sync with a larger patch. But if you're using a single sound source, or if you're using Aurora as an end of chain effect, or perhaps you're recording a percussion loop, turning the setting on will help you tighten your dry and wet signals, mostly when using higher FFT settings. Always blur determines the blur state on the time and blur knobs. The default setting is on, meaning that the wet signal is always spectrally blurred to some extent. When off, no blurring occurs when time and blur are fully down. This can be useful if you're wanting to transition seamlessly from a dry sounding signal to a fully blurred signal and back, or to use reflect as a random ambient delay line. Quantize warp is a toggle between quantizing warp to semitones and unquantized pitch tracking. So depending on your use case, either option can really make or break your sound. Whether you're sequencing a major scale arpeggio or CVing smooth pitch sweeps, the devil's always in the details. Not only does the setting toggle on and off, but you can also toggle between quantizing CV as well. Type two for the setting to quantize both the knob and the CV. And our last setting, Warp Dead Zones, goes hand in hand with Quantize Warp. To help hit the octaves with relative ease, Aurora creates dead zones where the warp knob will snap to the nearest octave. Turning dead zones off makes it easier to perform smooth pitch sweeps without stepping in to the octaves. Now let's change a couple of these settings to hear the difference in sound. We're gonna change the DSP order and turn Always Blur off. Once you've made your changes, save the file and eject your USB drive. Plug it back into Aurora and Aurora will automatically update your settings for you 
There's no need to power cycle or perform any button command. Now let's give our changes a listen. So now you'll hear that when we turn time and blur down, no spectral blurring is happening on our wet signal. And you can really hear the difference when I turn up reflect. And just like that, I've covered every function available on Aurora. You've officially graduated and you're ready to take on the world with your new spectral powers. It's important to remember that Aurora was designed with future updates and alternate firmware in mind. This is only the beginning and we encourage you to join the Qubit community both on our forums and on our socials and take part in developing future alternate firmware, updates, and more for Aurora. Thank you so much for taking this time to learn this unique instrument and what I think is the beginning of new sonic adventures at the same time as perhaps a return to the feeling of excitement and discovery which you first had when you got into modular synthesis. Because discovery is what we're here for. <laughs>